way we've done that is obviously the IPR view helps the fact that Karma is rendering nonstop. Um, but we also made some changes to our handles to make things easier. There are indirect drags for changing the intensity of lights, for instance, so that you're not always having to go to the parameter pane to make these changes. There's a look at handle, so you can snap your look at to an object. You know, these are all sort of very expected things for, for handles to be able to do, but we've made some updates to make them work a little nicer, um, a little smoother. And of course, we have this look at handle on the other end as well, so that if you are zoomed in on the horse, for instance, you still have access to. And this is sort of the base level. We want to make sure these things work, they work well. You can change the size and intensity of lights in a nice interactive way. But we wanted to take that further. So what we've done is we've created these different states for different types of lighting. So here I can just click on the surface of an object and we'll align the light to the surface. And that way if I want to light the front of the nose, for instance, I can just click there. And this is an interesting tool just you know, on its face, but where it becomes really interesting is it means that a lighter can work from the camera's perspective, right? They don't have to be in a different perspective moving these lights around. We also have handles to move the lights uh, further away or toward the object. But also we can do that while maintaining the intensity. So you can see that the spot on the horse actually stays the same brightness as we move the light further away. And again, that means reducing the amount of sort of tweaking that an artist has to do. If they have a light that they like and they like the intensity but they need to tweak the position a small amount, it's very frustrating to move it and then go, oh no, I need to change the intensity now to, to match where it was before. Um, and of course, we can also bring up that same look at handle in this mode if you do want to do some fine tweaking uh, of the position. So then we have something that we're calling a shadow target mode. And essentially what this is is like a light pivot. So I can click on the head of the horse and then click anywhere else in the scene and we're basically going to project the shadow onto that point in the scene. So you can see I can just drag around and basically place that shadow exactly where I want it by creating a pivot on the horse's head where that the light moves around. And this becomes, again, a way of working um, to get a result as a very standard thing to want to be able to do. Um, but to get it while looking through the camera's point of view. And so suddenly the task of a lighter um, is much more interesting. There's less jumping around. It's more about art directing the scene, sort of painting with light, as they say. And then there's specular. So here we have a, a tool for placing specular highlights. So rather than lighting the surface diffusely, from my camera's perspective, I can say I want a reflection of a light at a specific part of my object. So when I click on the saddle, you'll see that we don't move the light there, we move the reflection of the light there. And so as I drag over the surface, I can create glints and highlights exactly where I want them, again, from the perspective I'm working at. And this is really useful when you want to create sort of rim lights and so on, um, but also especially in the idea of a character where often somebody says, oh, I need a light you know, in the eye of this character. So here you just simply click um, on the surface and we'll move the reflection there. So again, trying to take all the common tasks a lighter would do and create these streamlined workflows to make them um, more entertaining to actually do. It's fun to use these tools, uh, but also more practical. So let's look at a practical example here. So we've got these bottles and we want to very quickly light this scene. So I'm just going to go into my network, drop what we're calling a key light. You can see, especially with objects like this, how useful it is to be able to do that specular placement because a lot of these shiny surfaces get their surface properties from the reflections more so than the direct light. But we can just quickly put down some uh, lights to reflect on these bottles on the, the, the right side and go ahead and place one on the left side. I'm not worrying too much about the intensity of these lights at this point. I'm kind of just getting them down, you know, sculpting the scene uh, with my lights. I'm going to go ahead and add a top rim light to pull out, cut out the top of this object from the background. And now we'll put down an actual spotlight. So we've also changed our spotlight handle. So if we just pull back a bit, you can see I can just click where I want the spotlight to point. And we have a new spotlight handle that lets us change, again, the intensity indirectly, but also just grab that spotlight and pull it in to change the position of the spotlight. Um, and of course, we have parameters uh, that are new for our lights for things like barn doors so that you can sort of sculpt the light even further, change that shape dramatically, bring it down so we're sort of cutting our image in half there. And then we have this uh, dome light or environment light. And in this case, we just want the reflection. So we can just simply turn down the diffuse multiplier, remove the diffuse uh, contribution, and just stick with the reflections. 
And so you can see in just a couple of minutes and just a handful of nodes, you can very quickly lay out a scene like this. Now, obviously, you want to tweak the intensity of these, in intensities of these lights, but as a first step, uh, a pretty fast, pretty painless workflow. So the next thing is to start doing what's called light linking. And light linking is basically saying things like, I want my key light to only light things that are on the table. And you can do that very simply with this new interface where we have these different scenes. So for instance, bring in all of my rim lights. But that's a little tedious. You know, I've got a bunch of lights. So we can create something called a collection instead. And I can just call this all rim lights. And now we can create rules for all of those things simultaneously. So I bring in my rim lights and say only the bottles are lit by the rim lights. And now you can see how we're changing our overall view here. Then we can also do shadow linking. So you can see I brought in this table lamp. And I'm saying remove the shadows from the bottle from that light. And we don't actually want to do that in this case because it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it's possible. And then you can go the opposite way. So in this case, we brought the geometry in and said this geometry is only lit by this light. So you can actually work on either side, light-centric rules or geometry-centric rules. And the really nice thing is that these rules then persist. These are USD rules. They're on the lights themselves. They exist essentially as collections. So if I add a new light to my scene, and then I go downstream and I add a new light linker, you can see that all the previous rules are still there. Right? They all show up. They can be read. And so this doesn't just come from the network upstream. It comes from the USD itself. So if you just brought in a file that had these um, rules, um, they would show up here in the light linker. So you're never less sort of guessing, like, oh, did somebody else in some other scene set up these rules or not? They're all here for you to be investigated directly. You can see they're sort of tinted a dark gray like that to let you know that they've been imported. They weren't created in this node. Now, finally, we want to start talking about the actual color and intensity of these lights. So we're going to use the same group that we used before, except now in this thing called the light mixer. And these are sort of custom UIs designed to give you this high-level view of what's happening in your scene. Um, by the way, these are all QT widgets, which means that they're quite customizable if you wanted to change some of the behavior here. But basically, the idea is that I want to now sort of go light by light and start tweaking um, things in my scene. I can easily solo the lights by clicking the solo button. Obviously, I can tweak the colors and so on. And because we've already set up our light linking, everything sort of behaves the way we would expect. And then these light groups are really interesting because you still have access to all the lights inside the group. Um, so I can individually tweak, for instance, the right rim light, maybe make it sort of a cooler uh, color. Um, I can tweak the left rim light and so on. But I can also say, no, I want to do the entire group all at once. So I can control every light in there. I can even tint the lights inside that group. So if I want to move them all slightly more green to help them tie in with the background a little more, I can do that. So we still keep the overall intensities. We're basically adding a tint on top. So you have a lot of control over how you interact with these lights. Here now we're just adjusting this sort of little kicker that we added to the label. But of course, what if you have like a lot of lights, you know, maybe 100 lights? It's entirely possible that you would. So there's also this sheet view that gives you um, even more information than the mixer does, and, but still lets you do things like mute lights, um, solo lights, change intensities, and so on. So this is more of a, a low-level view of your scene where you can get a quick overview of many, many lights. That wouldn't just be practical to do um, in the light mixer itself. Mm -hmm.